Fellow Ukrainians, the debris of the house destroyed by the Russian missile is still being dismantled in Dnipro. I thank everyone who is carrying out this rescue operation. Every employee of the state emergency service and police, every doctor, every volunteer, everyone who is involved. As of now, 39 people, including six children, have been rescued from under the rubble. In total, 47 reports were received about those who could have been in the house at the time of the strike and whose fate was unknown. The information about 22 people has been clarified. It is known about 40 dead, including three children. My condolences to all whose loved ones were killed by this strike. The security service of Ukraine has already started to gather information about those Russian military who prepared and carried out this strike. There is no doubt, every person guilty of this war crime will be identified and brought to justice. This strike at Dnipro, as well as other similar strikes, falls, in particular, under the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court. And we will use all available opportunities, both national and international, to ensure that all Russian murderers, everyone who gives and executes orders on missile terror against our people, face legal sentences. And to ensure that they serve their prison sentences in full. This is a fundamental task for Ukraine and for our partners. I thank everyone who supports our country on the path to justice. Today, by the way, I spoke with Prime Minister of the Netherlands Mark Rutte, he is one of those who help Ukraine the most, particularly in the issue of justice. It was our third conversation with Mr. Prime Minister in four weeks. I am grateful to Mark and all Dutch people for their continued support and clear understanding that Ukrainians must defeat Russian aggression. Today we discussed protection against Russian missiles and Iranian drones, we are doing everything to strengthen our air defense as much as possible. It is very important that our conversation took place on the eve of the visit of the Prime Minister of the Netherlands to the United States. What happened in Dnipro, the fact that Russia is preparing a new attempt to seize the initiative in the war, the fact that the nature of hostilities at the front requires new decisions in the defense supply, all this only emphasizes how important it is to coordinate our efforts, efforts of all members of the coalition to defend Ukraine and freedom, and to speed up decision-making. Today, there is a good example from the UK. A new package of defense assistance has been announced, exactly what we need. Tanks, other armored vehicles, artillery. What we had discussed with Prime Minister Sunak. I thank you, Rishi, I thank every Briton for the tangible and timely support. I held a regular meeting of the staff of the Supreme Commander. The questions are as follows. Interaction with our partners. Counteraction to missile terror. Possible scenarios of enemy actions and our response to each of the probable scenarios. There were reports of commanders, intelligence chiefs. There were also necessary decisions. The situation in the Donetsk direction was considered separately and in detail. Soldar, Bakhmut, and other cities against which Russia has concentrated its last most prepared forces. We also reviewed the situation on the southern front. We see what Russia is preparing. Every day and night we work to reduce the enemy's potential, every day and night we subtract their warehouses, headquarters, communications. Today, the OSCE chairman in office, Minister of Foreign Affairs of North Macedonia visited Kiev. Of course, we discussed, first of all, how to make the OSCE effective. This is one of those international organizations that have significant potential, but for various reasons in critical situations have a great lack of effective actions, a great lack of determination. The OSCE can significantly increase attention and act accordingly regarding the deportation of our people from the occupied territory to Russia. And regarding the situation with Ukrainian prisoners, no international organization has found the strength to gain access to the places of detention of our prisoners in Russia yet. This must be corrected. I hope that the OSCE presidency of North Macedonia will contribute to this. Starting tomorrow, this week will be even more active in terms of our diplomacy. 
The Davos Forum will start its work, Ukraine will be heard at this globally important platform. At the end of the week, a regular meeting in the Ramstein format will be held. We expect fundamental decisions from the coalition of our partners. Important bilateral negotiations are also planned. Every day of our diplomatic marathon brings Ukraine quite specific defensive results. And I thank everyone who helps our state. I thank everyone who works for the victory of Ukraine. Glory to each of our warriors. Glory to all who have been fighting since February 24 and since 2014. This week, on January 20, we will mark the day of honoring the defenders of the Donetsk airport. Today we have already started to recall that defense, that heroism of our people. The fight started in May 2014. The last defender left the DAP on January 23, 2015. And it was such a defense that the whole world should have seen back then already what Ukrainian invincibility means. I am confident that the Ukrainian flag will return to the Donetsk airport, Donetsk and other cities and villages of our Donbass and other temporarily occupied territories. Temporarily, it is the key word. Ukraine will return its people and what belongs to it. Glory to Ukraine!